Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today, I am continuing on with the Candyman reviews, and I will be reviewing the first sequel, Candyman Farewell to the Flesh. Now, I did like this movie. I don't think it's as good as the first, but I did think it was a good follow-up. Even though they tried to change kind of the continuity a little bit of the first movie which I wasn't really that big on but you know it's a sequel it's kind of expected a lot of times when you make a sequel that they would end up doing that but other than that I did like the movie I thought it was a good sequel like I said not as good as the first but enjoyable nonetheless and before I go any further if anybody would like to help contribute to the channel by sending in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series or a cartoon or a comic book or a video game, music, random thoughts and streams and rants and commentaries and anything in between. That's what the paid request is set up for. So again, if you're interested in, send it in and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I am, you know, at this point, I am pretty caught up, to be honest. Uh, there's still obviously a bunch that I need to get to. But for the most part, I am pretty much caught up on the paid request. So uh, I might be done by the end of the year. We'll see. We will just see what happens. But uh you know, for those that have sent him in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It means you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel, and you want to see me try out some different things. Uh, and it's a win-win because not only do you guys get to see more stuff that you want to see, but I also am motivated to keep wanting to make videos. So there you go. So thank you. But this was actually not a paid request like I did with the uh, the Massacre films. I figured since Total Meltdown wanted me to review the first one as a paid request, I figured, you know what, what the hell, I might as well do the two sequels while I'm at it and just get them all done and go from there. You know, it makes sense to me, right? So, And like the first one, I had never seen this before. I had never seen any of the Candyman movies before now. And I know what some people are thinking, oh my God, how, like, why have you never seen them? It's Candyman. Well, again, like I said in the previous video, like I've said in, you know, numerous other videos that I've done, it is impossible to see every single movie or TV show or cartoon out there. It's just impossible. You know, but better late than never is what I say. <laughs> so sometimes better late than never is a good thing. So there you have it. But So the first Candyman was successful. I mean, obviously it was successful enough to get two sequels and a shitty remake, which I will not be covering. But, you know, obviously there was a, a little bit of, of room there to do a sequel and, and do something different. Now, the director of the first movie originally was going to come back he was going to do a a prequel actually you were going to see how Candyman and Helen you know the ancestor of Helen were going to fall in love and the events that led up to him becoming Candyman but the studio didn't want to do that because well it's you know an interracial love story you know, people don't like that sort of thing, which is not true at all, because there's been plenty of movies over the years where they've done that, and people love them, so, yeah, I don't know why that's such a taboo, even now, in today's uh, world, you know, because movies are supposed to be more inclusive and diverse, and they're still afraid to have a white guy and a black woman, or a black woman and a white man, or an Asian guy and a black, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know why. That's, you know, so, oh my God, we can't have, it's got to be all the same. No, it really doesn't, because that's not how it works in the real world. There's plenty of interracial couples out there, and there's plenty of people that are, you know, with other people that aren't the same race as them. It's, you know, as long as you ain't doing nothing wrong, and you ain't hurting nobody, who gives a shit? Love is love. <laughs> so whatever. Anyway, here's Wonder Wolf, but... 
that didn't happen. And then there was, I don't know how far along they got, but there was another idea where they were going to take Candyman to London and it was going to be a different Candyman because these murders were going to start happening. They were like Jack the Ripper. And then you find out it's actually a woman. So it was going to be Candy Woman. But that ended up not happening because I think they said the script was too violent. So it never got made. So we ended up getting this movie. Which again, I do like. It doesn't, I will say, it doesn't really add to the to the table. It doesn't really bring much to the table different. It's kind of the same movie in some respects. They just added a little bit more of the backstory, which in turn convoluted the first movie. So again, we know how sequels can be. So the plot of this film is they move it from Chicago to New Orleans, which I do like. I like the New Orleans locale. I really like the scene where Candyman is stalking uh, Kelly Rowan's character, the lead lady, through Mardi Gras. That was really cool. That's definitely, you know, slasher horror movie type of stuff. So glad that was in there. That was cool. And I do like the ending. The ending was very well done in this film as well with the water and everything else. But they move it to New Orleans, which is where Candyman came from. And there is, again, Kelly Rowan. Kelly Rowan has been in a bunch of stuff. I remember her the most from The Gate, the 80s movie with Stephen Dwarf, which is one of my favorite 80s horror movies. Never gets talked about. Very underrated film, in my opinion. One day I will review those. Uh, might as well review the sequel to that, even though the second one was not nearly as good as the first, in my opinion. But we'll get to those when we get to those. So she's a school teacher. One of her students tells her about Candyman. He's seen him, kind of like the kid in the first movie. And her brother is the prime suspect in this murder because the professor from the first movie, the movie opens up, he's given this presentation because he wrote a book about Candyman. After the presentation, this guy goes after him and says, hey, like, this is real, like, my dad was a cop, and he investigated this stuff, and he got killed because of it, like, this is not a joke, this is not phony, and then Candyman kills that guy, and then this, the brother of Kelly Rowan's character, he's the prime suspect, because he got into an argument with this guy, so they think, the cops think that he did it, even though he did not, but anyway, it was all Candyman, so she starts to learn more about it, she brings Candyman back, and then they kind of, like I said, they kind of convolute the first movie because you find out that this lady, her, you know, ancestor was the one that Candyman fell in love with and was going to have a baby with until they killed him, which, again, conflicts with the first movie because in the first movie, it was Virginia Madsen's character, Helen, it was her ancestor that was going to be the the bride of Candyman, so to speak. <laughs> and, and if, if you want to make that sequel, you know, there's a free idea, but that's basically what they were going for. And then you find out she's pregnant, so Candyman wants her and her baby for the sacrifice, like in the first film. And, you know, it's more of her trying to get rid of Candyman. You find out that her, again, her dad was the cop that was investigating that got killed, and then there's this mirror, and if you destroy the mirror, you destroy Candyman, and the house that they live in was his house. So they try to do all these different connections with the character, again, like a lot of sequels where they try to explain more than they have to explain, which I do think this movie, one of the big issues is there's that in there, even though it was unnecessary, at least in my opinion. So then the little, the, the kid get, the kid disappears. She goes after the save the kid. They stop Candyman. They come back. They save the day. A couple years later, she has a daughter. The daughter starts saying Candyman. She stops her. The movie ends. Pretty much it. <laughs> Pretty much it. Um, you know, again, this didn't really add much meat to the bone, so to speak, that wasn't already there. It didn't really bring anything new to the table. But a lot of sequels don't, and 
you know, that's okay. And there's a lot of sequels out there that do not do that, that I enjoy. I mean, in all honesty, I know I always talk about this, but a lot of the early Friday the 13th sequels were pretty much the same movie. It's just different actors that get killed. But I like Friday the 13th Part 2. Actually, out of the first four, Friday the 13th Part 2 has always been my favorite. The only really thing that was different was the cast was different and Jason was actually the killer. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of these, particularly horror sequels, I know that Candyman is considered by a lot to be a slasher film. And there's, again, there's elements of that in these movies so far. Again, I have not seen part three yet. I will watch part three after recording this video. But, you know, it, it, I get it. it it's, it's kind of going off of, off of that type of stuff. But again, I liked it for what it was. There's a, I mean, I love the location. I love how they go to New Orleans, which I love whenever that's used as a in a in a film. Uh, a couple of years before this movie came out, Hard Target was set there. Um, you know, there's been a lot of different movies set in there, and I think it is a really interesting location for a film. Um, even after Hurricane Katrina, there has been a lot of movies that have been filmed there since then. And I still think that there's something very special and unique about New Orleans to where it makes for any, any kind of movie. It doesn't matter if it's a horror film or it's an action film or it's a romantic comedy or whatever you want, whatever you want to plug and play there. I think it's just one of those special places where you could do any kind of movie there and it would work. And that does work for this movie. It works for the character. It works for the type of movie that it is. So, yeah, I enjoy it. And, you know, like the first film, it does have a good cast. Tony Todd comes back as the Candyman, which is awesome. You know, one of the one of the reasons why he wanted to do the original movie was because he wanted to do his own version of Phantom of the Opera, which, you know, Candyman is definitely that type of character. And... You know, Virginia Madsen said, you know, with kind of the original idea for the sequel was to make him like the black version of Dracula. And I'm like, OK, well, I like that. You know, why, why can't we have a, a black Dracula? You know, that would be really cool. I guess we had Blackula back in the 70s. Those are pretty fun movies, to be honest. I need to I think they're on Blu-ray, but I would like to get those. The old, uh, you know, black exploitation movies. But in a more serious way. I'm like, okay, well, that would be cool. And, you know, she said that he's a tragic character. And I agree, because here's this guy that did nothing wrong. You know, he, was a, he, was a, he wasn't a slave. He was the son of a slave. And he was an educated man. He was an artist. He didn't do anything wrong. They killed him for no reason. He just wanted to be happy. And he came back as a vengeful demon or ghost, or whatever you want to plug and play there. So, yeah, I mean, there's definitely, you know, room for that character to do more, and I think Tony Todd not only knocked it out of the park with the first movie, but he has a good performance in this film as well. So, Tony Todd, again, Candyman is his signature role, um, you know, but he's been in a lot of other stuff over the years, which I've enjoyed. Always like, see, even if the movie's not good, at least Tony Todd will be good in the film. But, you know, he's the man, and he's the man in this movie, so that's awesome. Again, Kelly Rowan is the lead. Like I said earlier, I remember her for The Gate with Stephen Dorff. But she's been in a lot of other stuff over the years as well. She's been, I think, mostly television work, but she's done some movies here and there. And Veronica Cartwright is in the movie from Alien. She was also on X-Files. Um, she plays her mother. Matt Clark, he was the bartender in Back to the Future 3. He was also uh, in Eye for an Eye with Chuck Norris. He was the, the dirty cop that set up Chuck Norris's character in that movie. He's in this for a little bit. Uh, Bill Nunn, may he rest in peace. He was uh, Robbie Robertson in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films. He was also the Dada Man in New Jack City. He was in... Substitute 4, he was in a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, he died a couple of years ago. But I did enjoy his work as an actor, and he plays a reverend in this movie, which was cool. And Timothy Carhart has a small part. He is the boyfriend of the lead character. He was in Pink Cadillac, the Clint Eastwood movie. 
he was in motocross the disney channel movie he was in unfortunately he was in uh black dawn with steven seagal but hey you know it was a paycheck for him but he's been in a lot of different stuff again over the years a uh, good actor he has a small part but the cast is really good. The special effects and the makeup are very well done. Again, this was the mid '90s, so you know it was all still practical. It, CGI hadn't completely taken over yet, and like the first film, you know it's all done in camera. It's all done for real, and that's the way it needs to be done, in my opinion. And that's the way I think a lot of people really like myself included. And I know a lot of you feel that way. But, um, you know, good kills in this one. Like I said, makeup and, and special effects are good, but more kills. I was kind of expecting to see Candyman a little bit earlier. He didn't show up until 35 minutes into the film. And I know what some of you are thinking, well, you know, they have to summon him. I'm like, well, yeah, I get that. I, you know, I, I saw the first movie, but <laughs> this is the sequel. Like, you would think that they would get to him a little bit quicker and give him a little bit more to do as a character. but. It's just the way that the script was designed, I guess. Oh, well. But at the end of the day, um, you know, I like this for what it is. I thought it was a good sequel. It didn't really add much. It kind of changed and tweaked some things. But I like, again, I liked it for what it was. It's a good movie. I would not uh, shout factory, put this one out like the first movie. There's some decent features on there. So I definitely would not mind you know, picking this up and, and getting it in the collection to watch it again. Um, it did well, because I don't think the budget was that big. It didn't do as much money as the first movie, but I still think it did well enough. And then they ended up doing the third film. But I think the third movie went direct to video. Again, I haven't seen it yet. Um, I will definitely clarify that when I watch it in a couple of minutes here after I'm done this video. And of course, in the next review, I'll let you guys know about that. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my review of Candyman Farewell to the Flesh. It does not have two in the title. It's just called Candyman Farewell to the Flesh. And next up, I will be reviewing the third and final movie, Candyman 3, Day of the Dead. So until then, as always, thank you guys for watching. Take care, and we will talk soon. See you.